Okay, so this week you're going to be working with the infrared spectrometer or the IR spectrometer. And so this is the setup that is going to be used over here. This is over on the other side. You see the GCs in the background. You're working over there last week. This is what you're going to be working with whenever you run an IR. So normally, this computer is on just as is. If not, turn it on. This is the tower right here. Press the button. You've all worked with computers before. Once it comes on, it should automatically log in, and then you need to open up the Omnic software. It's O-M-N-I-C, not the one that says Omnic Spectra. It's Omnic, the one by itself. So double click it, it'll start to open, and the first window will pop up. Now the first thing you need to do before you actually run an IR is you need to take a background. And so the IR is normally left like so, just over here, nothing on, nothing on like the lens or anything. And so you need to collect all the ambient stuff so that way that you don't skew your results by whatever is being detected by the background. So to do this, once this comes up, you'll hit C-O-L-B-K-G, which is short for Collect Background. If you hover, it pops up and says Collect Background. So we'll click it, and it'll say, please prepare it. You hit OK, and now you wait. Over in the bottom left, and this is for both the background and all samples, it will give you like a running time to see how long until it pops up. And then once it's done, it says the data collection has stopped. Hit Yes to add it to the window. And then now this is what the IR of the background looks like. And so once it's collected, it's going to store it in the background. It's going to store it in like the memory of the computer so that you can go ahead. It'll automatically remove it from whenever you're ready to take a sample. So in this lab, you'll be working with two different types of samples. They'll be solids and liquids, and I'll show you how to do both. I'm going to go ahead and start with the liquid. I'm working with metaxylene as this one, but all the liquids will be the same. To actually take it liquid IR, you're going to move this out of the way. Sometimes it's like this. Move it out of the way, and then you'll take just a little bit out of your sample right over the lens. You don't need very much. Just like so. And even that right there could be considered too much, but just enough that it covers the lens. And if you end up working with a volatile solvent, you need to move fast because it will evaporate. In this case, it's not too volatile, so I'm not that worried about it. But now that I've got the liquid on the lens, I'm going to go ahead and hit Collect Sample, or C-O-L, S-M-P, Collect Sample. And then I'll enter the spectrum title. I'll just say M. I entered it in, it'll say confirmation, please prepare. I'm gonna hit okay. And again, we're gonna see an updated bar in the bottom left that says collecting, and then it's taking individual scans. And then you get an IR of what your sample is. Yes, to add to window one. And now you got both of them on here. You've got the background that's in the blue, and you've got the xylene that's in the red. Now, what if you wanna take a picture of this? What if you wanna get rid of something in the background just so you can see what you're interested in? Well, let's say I want just the xylene by itself. I'm going to click down, I'm going to click on the background, and then I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to hide the spectrum. So you need to click on the one that you want to hide. So again, I'll bring it back up. So now if I want to hide the background, I'll go back up here, down to the bar, hit background, view, hide spectra, and it will disappear. So now, as you can see, all I have is the IR for m -Zyden. So if I wanted to zoom in a little bit more and say, so on the bottom we have wave numbers at the bottom, which corresponds to energy. If I wanted to isolate just a smaller region and not everything, what I can do is I can use these buttons down here on the bottom that are look like out, arrows out, arrows in, and up and down to expand or contract the graph as necessary. So you can click on that and arrow that. Um, the spectrum is necessary. So in this case, let's say I wanted to cut off just a little bit at the end right here. Now I did. All I did was I just dragged that edge over a little bit and now I'm looking at less of the graph. If I wanted to say just isolate that big peak there, which you normally don't, but I could drag that bar on the bottom on either side and isolate just that peak right here from 3000 to 2800. Double click on the spectrum to return it back to normal. All right. So once I'm done and I've got my liquid sample and I'm ready to do something else, you should always do this because it's a good practice to clean up after yourself. I'll use the Kim white just to wipe up the excess off the top. And then once I'm done, I will take some acetone and then I will do a little bit on top. Same as you did with the refractometer. You will clean off the top so that you leave none of your substance behind. And just for good practice, I'll go ahead and wipe the top again. Now, when it's time for solid, I'm open it up. I've got benzoic acid for this solid. All I need is a small amount to cover the lens again. I don't need very much. I don't want to get too much. Feel free to take your time whenever you do this because it's better to save as much as you can. So I'll put just the same sample right on top of the lens. See that right there is actually a little too much, but I don't want you to have to sit here for 15 minutes and watch me try to get a really small sample. So, now, 
With a solid sample, unlike a liquid sample, we need to use this arm over here to compress it into a pellet. Obviously you can't see it, but once you get here in the lab, you can actually feel on the other side of this with your finger is a divot. It's like a little bitty indentation that will form a pellet whenever you screw it down on top. And I forgot to do this. I'm gonna wet my chem wipe because I don't know who's been here before. And I'm gonna run it up under the edge of this to clean off any residue that could be there. Just in case. Now, once it's time to do this, all I gotta do is just rotate it over into this general area. And if it's up high, it won't snap into place. So I just kind of get it sort of where I want it to go and then start screwing downwards. Clockwise, we'll turn it over towards the panel and then counterclockwise, we'll lift it up. I'm gonna keep doing this until I'm pretty close and then I'm gonna try and adjust it again. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but it snapped into place. This is when it's close enough that it can actually feel it. I'm gonna continue going down, get ready to form the pellet. And now it's making contact with the interface and I can feel it start to resist my turning. Eventually, as if you were turning like a gas cap on your car, it will eventually click, just as if you were trying to turn on a car. I will let this click three times so that it has adequate contact with the surface, but I don't want to turn it more than three times and accidentally exert too much pressure and potentially crack the lens. Crack the lens. But after it's on there, screw it until it clicks three times and then you're ready to take the solid sample. Like last time, I don't have to collect the background this time. It, you, you don't need to collect the background because you've got a sample on the interface. But I'm gonna hit COL, SMP, collect sample, and it'll pop up the thing again, and it'll ask me to enter the spectrum title, okay, top A, then the way it asked me. And then please, please prepare to collect the sample, hit okay, and then it's loading. Give it just a second. And there's our spectrum. Add to window, yes. And then again, we ran into a problem where we have two spectrums on there. Say I want to isolate benzoic acid. I need to go to the one I don't want on the screen. So in this case, if I want benzoic, I don't want xylene. So I click on xylene, and then I go to view, and then I go to hide spectrum. And now all I have left is benzoic acid. So now, once you're done, if you intend to save this somewhere, which you need to, if you're used to doing this, we'll hit file. This is anything else, and then save as, and you can save your spectra as whatever you want it to. Um, I'm not gonna actually save it because I don't need to save these, but after you get done, this will save just the one that's active on the screen. So, see, it tries to tell you, title, benzoic acid, yes, that's correct, you want it to be benzoic acid, so you're saving. So, you need to save each individual one. So, let's suppose I just saved this one, now I need to go save xylene, I go click xylene, so it pops up again. I don't want benzoic acid, so click it, view, hide the spectra, and now I've got xylene, and then file, save as, in xylene. And so, once I've got all of that, all my file saved, last time we were working with this, turn the camera clockwise to get up off the surface. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and get this down. So I'll Don't forget to do the underside if you're working with a solid, because there will be some in there. And then for hit measure, down top. And then you're all finished. It won't turn off. 